Ryan McGee tweeting during the program, uh, before the program. Reynold Carlot, Ricky Craven, and Johnny Benson look at me and ask if I want to drive. Um, no. Yeah, and no, I mean, what, I, mean I got. Have you seen all the things they hit over <laughs> the <laughs> of this? I got, I, got, I, got, I got ice and snow in Connecticut. I got two Cup Rookie of the Years. I also tweeted this during the show. This is the final proof, folks. Race fans, quit asking me. Yeah. <laughs> quit saying, hey Johnny, hey Johnny Benson, give me an autograph. I'm not Johnny Benson. Identical so, twins. We are not the separated same person. at birth. So yeah. if you weren't worried about us driving, why'd you bring a Hans and a helmet? Yeah. Well, I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just. <laughs> Guys, this has been a lot of fun. I, uh, yeah, you can see even the wreck behind me. Look at that. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> you gotta be careful, folks. You never know who's watching. But, um, exactly right. decal of a marijuana leaf on a cup driver's helmet shown just before the start of the Phoenix race. It was a white helmet and the driver was not identified. Really? One of you, one of the contestants, will win a brand new 1968 automobile. <laughs> I think that's twice. Uh, Ms. Crocker, Ms. Betty White. Uh, I want you to buckle me up for safety. What a seatbelt says. Uh, mice, uh, baby shoes, Look the sweet. leprechauns, little things, things that... Yes. Because I don't want to smile. Why do people frown? Why you frown? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. East, East Coast New States, New England. Yes. Uh, your family history, stem cells, things you research. Yeah! 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 Well, the pace car 
we understand has been stolen. The uh, officials are not driving this thing, and <laughs> somebody has actually gone to the pace car and stole it. Let's see what happens when he gets to the uh, roadblock. Will he try to go through it, or will he stop and be captured? And I guess he's going to stop. <laughs> He's being loaded into a police cruiser now and will probably be spending the night in the local lockup. You'll have to excuse me now because I have a very important phone call to make. So long, everyone. Oh, there's no phone in here, darn it. Let's see what happens on the final lap of the race. Here comes the field down for the white flag. One more to go. Rudd is inside of the Earnhardt as they go into turn number one and both of them spin. You know, I've never been able to understand why people can't get along with their co-workers. Bob, you hurry up. Did you want some coleslaw with this one? All right, now, everybody just calm down. What would you like to drink? All right, all right. Now, let's see. They're down to four or five car lengths. And a slow car right and then Earnhardt is not on his back. But let's see what strategy he pulls. No, Labonte is sideways, but wins the race. Crashes, and he wins anyway. How about that? Whoa! Well you, well, you know, all that enthusiasm is really great, but sometimes it's difficult to figure out exactly what the announcer is trying to say. Dale Jarrett leads the Mountain Dew Southern 500 from Darlington Raceway in Southern California. If he wins this race, he wins the Winston Select. South oh, Carolina, not oh, I'm Southern sorry. California. <laughs> Where are you? Is that what I said? Yeah. Oh, well. Well, he was a little upset with himself or the car or the track or something. In any case, Johnson slides off into the tires. Thanks, Larry. Like I said, last week we looked at rear camber and this. No, no, no. Don't you ever watch these shows. Last week, Robin Pemberton talked about rear camber. That's what I and said. And we, we showed you didn't say that. Danny, you're not listening again. <laughs> Dog, got it. We'll take another break and be back in just a moment. You big liar. <laughs> I hope that got out. It did. <laughs> I hope so too. That, that just capped it off. <laughs> ben said, "You big liar!" And I hope we got it on the air before we went to break. <laughs> we are coming down to the final lap, through three and four. You're on board with Dan Weldon. There is the glare one more time. White flag. White flag. White flag. Does Dan Weldon have anything left? If he's got it, he's got to pull it the trigger now. Castro Nevis lives in nearby Miami, has no never won it. Here we go, down the back stretch, Weldon on the high side, side by side, through three. Who's going to win it? Coming through the home stretch. Castro Nevis on the inside, Weldon on the outside, at the strike, it is Weldon. Weldon beats Castro Nevis, his 10th career win, second straight here at Homestead, and again, heartbreak for Ariel. Off way early. Are you telling me Crybaby's gonna win this race? 39 and 40. Well, Grandpa will be happy. Crybaby wins the race. And the NASCAR doesn't claim the championship! third. Damn. Where'd he come from? Sweet night indeed for Penske Racing and that man, Roger Penske. Yeah. The cup to the captain, finally. 23 full time seasons before he gets his first. There's that number, 23. One of my main numbers. No, that's a Johnny Bench. Oh, uh, that's why. Oh. <laughs> Yes, sir. I bet his daddy's happy. All them years he's aged. And so's his brother. Go tonight! 
Jim Bernard, Jack Bernie. Don't look down, we got a rookie in second. What? Damn. Frankini at the wall! What? Frankini crashed up? Frankini crashed up? Ty Keselowski guy. Jimmy Spencer. Spencer, Spencer, Spencer. And Ty Keselowski guy. Brad sucks. And Ty Keselowski guy. Spencer, 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 and Ty Keselowski guy. Spencer, 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 and Ty Keselowski guy. You son of a bee! It's the real deal. Final. Top fuel. Done. Wow. Can you say upset city? Wow. Look at this reaction. Up in smoke goes Mike Dunn. A 556 for the losing Dunn. A 466. 309 for the winner. Wow. Is this, this kid's got to be so pumped. It's a good thing he's got belts on because he'd be leaping out of that car right now. I'm just saying, wow. Uh oh, pedal job. Man, it's a pair of bucket Broncos. Yeah. Gonna be at the strike in a blistering time of 9.25 seconds and a whole shot. Phil Burkhardt, your race winner. Stewart, I got decent ones from this era. Ooh, the Jeff Burton car I like. Shocking X side. Mine, 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 Get my drink over here. You want to buy it? Oh, my God. 
<laughs> what? I just never realized who it was. <laughs> <laughs> Ten bucks, you gonna buy it? Did even the name on the box when it did a fire? I didn't look at the name. The name's on the box. I didn't look at the name. <laughs> Now this is neat right here. I never realized that the actual show sponsored Funny Bones Car. And I know the show existed in 2000 because I watched it. And Square Knee was associated with Funny Bone at the time because it was 2000. So that's a very neat item right there. Where is the Elliot car? There you are. Now that is a rare one right there. How much are these two items together? Thirteen bucks. Thirteen? Alright, let me see if I have enough. Let's see, there's a ten. And I got a bunch of quarters because like an idiot I decided you to. Got a dozen then, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I got more than a dozen. I only need a dozen. And you'd be good to go. Alright, one. Two. Three. Four. Yeah. Three. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. My top two drivers in their mind. Yay! Here are the two cars that I bought, as promised. Here's the 11 Bill Elliott car with an 11 on the hood, which I find is interesting. But I guess it's because of the sponsorship thing that is similar to the video games. And the most interesting item I got of the day is 2001 Johnny Benson Vaveline Pontiac. And all the stuff you saw at the State Fair video is what we have here. <laughs> I can't believe Mom did not figure out in five seconds who it was. I couldn't believe that, to be honest. Stop it! Car. Yeah, trying to get his left back. Oh, oh runs right in the back of Greg Sachs. As Ernie was trying to catch the car number five with Terry Labonte, who was leading the race. Then Gordon, of course, comes up and hits Ernie Urban. He was able to get by Setzer. Benson, though, goes by Skinner, which amazingly we thought teammates would work together. That is controversial there. Very controversial. Controversial, my butt. Do you want Benson costing you 50 points by wrecking you on a bad restart, or just three by passing you? I take the three, too. I guess um, we're not a team. I don't know. He I, I, I thought he was taking care of me, but uh, maybe his truck just wasn't any better than that. But um, I don't know. I, I don't want to comment on it. You don't want to comment on it? You just did! I do not have anything smart to say right now, okay? Many NASCAR fans accused me for many years of having a hatred for NASCAR on Fox. I finally traced the reason why. It's because of what Mike Joy says in this scene. Pounds are going to come around. That's why I stay so thin. I don't know what's next for me. You never can tell. <laughs> they've got ribs in the hotel. They've got ribs up in the booth. They've got ribs everywhere. The sad part is, Daryl Waltrip was the logical one in this scene. A uh, little ribbing going on. Let's do some more ribbing, guys. Well, maybe we can uh, maybe we can send one to Johnny Benson. Understand? He, he needs one. Needs a rib. And since that joke didn't go anywhere, we'll go to Dick Parkrin. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to think if that's funny or not. Ah, it wasn't. Never mind. Tell me, he didn't just say that. You're gonna flop. Yeah, because. 23 does not sound logical here because 2000 for that and a mid-level thing right before all the major stuff, not likely. I've seen bidders row or contestant show stuff worth 2300 The actual retail price is... Oh! The prices don't match. Sorry, you lose. Thank you for that ridiculous outro, Rich. <laughs> Here is the item up for bids. Thank you. It's a lovely swing. Woo! I know we're at each other's throats competitive wise, but that would be good for the both of us. Yes, it would. Feel the difference with sunset swings. It's an eliminated globe. A globe. A globe.
Yeah, a minute glove. Let's see it light up. This item's actual retail price is... What? Bull crap! That is not worth $2,800! The glove's about this size, which is just about like this, is worth 30 bucks. That's not no $2,800! I don't was. You settled on this price. Now it wants to be thirty one ninety nine. Retail price. The price is wow. Oh, garbage. Sorry, you lose. You actually think pointing me is gonna do you any good? You're still twenty eight hundred in the hole. Yeah, I guess. It's a stupid globe. I thought it was seven ninety nine to be honest. No, that's a twenty six hundred dollar globe. Bull crap. Your showcase is worth... Oh. What?! Oh, no, no, no. No way runner double is worth that much. That means you're over. Your showcase is worth... No. Oh, come on! It's a tie. We're going to a fifth round. First of all, ain't no possible way that wave runners at a minimum are $7,000 each, which means $15,000. Plus the Fiji trip, which is three thousand, and the other amount, which is lower than that, should be not be no thirty thousand dollars. Second of all, your stuff shouldn't be even be twenty three, let alone eighteen. Garbage. So money and good stuff. I don't know. <laughs> money and good stuff. Yep. Let's see what you'll be playing. Yeah, how is clocking when we're gonna on a game system? A four. <laughs> You sure about that? Ah, uh, that is not thirty-three dollars. I'm sorry, that's garbage. Let's reveal. You got an R. There's the R. Keep going. You got an A. You can. Did I do it? Oh my God! Oh, come on! Really? Garbage! It's a Ford! Ford, 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 Ford! I take it we're never playing this game again. That's no 18,000! Even if I win, it won't be enough! Your showcase is worth. Over! Told you it wasn't even the 18th! Even if I would have gone, I would have lost! Garbage! I'd come back from too low down to win the whole thing. You won the showcase! Yeah, I'm gonna spare you the four, because none of this is more than my showcase, and I don't let Mary use his garbage! Garbage! $45,000 worth of things. Garbage! And now our first fortress. Yeah. With the atomic waffles. <laughs> Whoops. Well, boyfriend gets the first death. Uh, yeah. Two two. There should be a mushroom in the beginning of this level, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so there is. Oh. Good job, genius! Run right into a Goomba. Good job, Joe. <laughs> And that went well, so it looks like I'm going to be taking care of this level by myself. <laughs> All right, Luigi, you get one shot. Let's get some lives. Uh-oh. Oh, you're being called. I'll take care of the mushroom house. Woohoo! Bye-bye for me. And Too bad this is a Mario World where you can pass on lives. Yeah. What? I said one, one pound box of macaroni, not macaroni and cheese. I got a macaroni and cheese. That's your fault. I, I wrote down one, one pound of macaroni and cheese. So tune in next to see Mario die, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I'm not gonna die. Yeah, you can always just continue with five lives all over again. So. Yeah. That's the good thing about this kind of games. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Do it Don't get now. eaten by the fish. Oh, no. It's 
this thing. Just run away, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. No, no, no! 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 Now what did I just tell you? 15 Mario seconds, and what did you do? The one thing I told you not to do, get eaten by the fish! Dun, 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 dun. Mm. Oh, before I die. Almost at that first fish. Ah! <laughs> the second fish! How about that? <laughs> and I made it without a scratch. Kind of. Go in the pipe. Or can I not Press go the on? down. I'm pushing. Go a little farther. Push the thing. Go in the middle. No, 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 no. Trying. <sighs> See? Well, let me go down. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. See? That's all you had to do. Uh, Don't err uh, me. Uh, That'll work. If you oh, watch you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. Ah. Why did you do that? I don't know. I'm joking. I'm joking. There's the shoe. I died to the shoe. <laughs> Give me. Here. Okay. Not gonna fall for that again. Yeah, you fell for that, though! I knew that was coming! The instant you said you wouldn't fall for that SSS watch, he's gonna hit the turtle. You hit the turtle! I knew it in my mind! Are we having a problem? No. Yes, he keeps running in the stock. I keep, I keep dying. <laughs> is our problem. You I keep... the club. I never made it past the number two. Now, don't run into that, please. That was my fault last Chat. time. You ran into it anyway! He ran into it anyway! I thought I could clear! You soft jump it, not hard jump! My bad! Wait, no, don't run into that again. Very good! There! Die! Die! Alright. Don't run into anything in this one. If I do... Ah! <laughs> he did that last time too! I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Alright, that one wasn't your fault. That was clearly the fish's fault. <laughs> yes, I got bumped. <laughs> that wasn't a fail on your fault. That was still that fish's fault. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> oh. If I can make it out of here without dying, I get a cookie. I'm kidding. I'm not getting a cookie. I'm not getting a cookie. <laughs> okay, use your scroll to the part to the right of that, and then all of a sudden come back over there. It makes no sense at all. This one's the easiest one, because all you gotta do is pass some fireballs. You jumped in the lava! How do you lose on the easiest level the in this entire thing? I hit the jump- I hit the jump button! <laughs> <laughs> glass is just set the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll work! Oh, God! <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> My glass has just turned the camera on. <laughs> oh, God. That was great. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Hello, fireball. They always appear. Five games to win. All right. What are you? <laughs> oh. Ah. What's up? A ghost? Um, I don't remember the... <laughs> That's cute. Oh, I just remember that graphic now. Let's, let's try again. That might... <laughs> ah! He turned! <laughs> oh, excellent! Whoa, nice. I'll fix that. Watch hey, this. hey, hey. No, no, no. Stop it. <laughs> hey! Yeah, I told you I'd fix that. <laughs> No! <laughs> that was your fault! 
fault. That was my fault. <laughs> Dang it! Oh, ah! <laughs> I won. Dang. Wee wee wee, Mario. Hey. All right, let's do. Oh, you want to do it again? That was garbage. <laughs> okay. I should have won that first. Nah. What? You ran into the crap on the other side of the screen. How? I don't know. Oh, I'm getting my butt handed to me today. Well, not really. The creatures are doing it, not me, so. I don't want it. <laughs> no! Yeah! <laughs> I didn't do the ghost. I didn't even do anything. <laughs> you right that was thing. my fault. I didn't do anything. All right, you seriously want to go to the in-game battle mode now? Because in-game battle mode has uh, less of that stuff and other weird, bizarre challenges. I forgot what they were, but thank you. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> yeah, that was mine. <laughs> Hey, this is doing out really good. Okay, um, what? <laughs> you totally didn't hit it. I think I did. <laughs> whoa! 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 What? Best out of five, I guess. That was the other one. Like that was the one I remembered the most. So maybe there wasn't a different one. Okay. Let's just find out. Ah. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Okay. That was my fault. What does say? What? All right. I almost had you there. I almost had you too. Now I did. Mm. <laughs> okay, that got nowhere. Let's try again. And not the lucky mask. What, what the? What, uh, 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 it, it, what, what just happened? Did you, you see that? You tell me. And we got that on footage, too. I think we're gonna go two, three. Nope, you're gonna get two! You're gonna get two! You're get what the? What the? What? Three tenths of a second! Oh my god! <laughs> I bounced. I didn't get you in time. I bounced across the line with the missiles. I didn't get you in time. <laughs> no, when you hit me with those missiles, I bounced across the line. Excellent! And, you got, and I got you like three tenths of a second. Oh my god! Oh man! Oh, now I know what the the music was referencing. Oh my god, I did not see it until just now that it was the Blizzard Bluff music. Yeah. Uh oh, uh oh, run away, run away, run away, run away from the angry girl. Run away, run away, run away, run away. Uh-oh. Okay, now she's mad. Run away. Run away, Joe. Run away. Run away. Run away. Run away. I'm running away now. Goodbye. That's yeah, totally hitting me. Dang it! Whoa! Ah! Ah! Wait, I got rid of my last one? Oh, God! Go! 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 No! <laughs> Not this time! Hey! Longest shot, thank you! I assume you mean the... I like that. Injury to insult. Even after I won! Thanks a lot, you stupid son of a bush brother! Well, we I somehow ran into one of your crates, and then as soon as that happened... Oh. And now I'm going backwards doing this. That's nice. Do it again. 
What the? Your screen glitch! No, that's not what I want. Come on, potion! It's gonna be a drag race! Go, go, go. Oh no, we're gonna get some ridiculous. What? Right? No! What'd you do? I, I didn't get what I wanted. Hey, 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 what's all this damn racket back here? It's not like two barbers back here fighting. Not anymore, because I just won. Ah! Crates are us! <laughs> hey, boy. You ain't let the girl whoop your mind. You should have seen the two races we had earlier! You whooping him bad? It, yes! No, well, technically no, because this was just the tiebreaker. Uh, we tied 2 2 in races, this was the tiebreaker. I won. Aww, no. Oh, you got him, you got him crying. No, oh, I'm just. Dude. I'm just. That, no. that was a baloney finish. Oh, wow. Uh, no, it wasn't! That wasn't a baloney finish! You ran into stuff! At least it wasn't a cheat up from rockets! Yes, but when I needed an item, I got a TNT crate! Welcome to my world! If I die first level, there, there's a problem. Oh! <laughs> did that really just happen? Yes, it did. I died on the first level of the game. Funny. The secret exit, just fine. Regular exit, this is my third try. Eh. Nope, oh, that's gone. Yep, don't run into the fish. Eh. What did I just say? What did I just say? Don't run into the fish. What did you do? You ran into the fish. That's... I'm going to show you how it's done. Give me that. Oh, take it from me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. There. Show off. What show off? He didn't even pass the first part of the water. Thank you. Huh? Hmm. Uh? Hmm. Okay, well, with, a, with a cussel that big, you wonder how big that green diglet thing actually is. Ludwig von Cooper's days of composing Cooper symphonies in the castle were over. Forest of Illusion lies ahead. Mario must use his brain to solve the puzzle of this perplexing forest. I hate the Forest of Illusion, but I love its music. And also, yes, that thing grows a band-aid, too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is the funniest one. Even funnier than Ludwig's. Huh? Bang! <laughs> And now to Chocolate Island. <laughs> the way Chief found his way through the Force of Illusion has put an end to Roy Koopa of Castle Number 5. I'm more to the dangerous but tasty Chocolate Island. Uh, this is easy if you got good timing. I don't. So I'll take care of the secret one. Shut up, timer! I'm right at the goal line! Touchdown! Oh, don't tell me. She's Woo! gone and done it. I think that's nine lives. It's eight lives. That's the first time I've ever done that! Alright, let's try this again. Let's not try this again! Let's not see that again! Amazing! 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 You know what video I read this Yes, I you? am. <laughs> Alright, do you know how to do the next one? Because this one is tricky. Let me see if I remember. Oh. Oh! No! That's obviously not it. <laughs> no, it's not! That obviously didn't do it. 
There we go. Now I have... Oh, no, I don't have a red Yoshi! And I'm gonna die. Almost. Now I'm gonna restore your life total. Okay. You have what? Oh, you have 13 to my... One. One. So we'll have seven each. Oh, no, he got cartoon too. There you go. I win the bet. What, you bet him it's going to be cartoons? No, I bet you were going to say it's cartoons. Cartoons? Yeah. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine, trust me. If I'm laughing, that means I'm having fun with it. Whee! Bye-bye. <laughs> Will you quit with that? Huh? Quit with that, please. Why, I'm watching the cartoon look. His little lightning tail's going around and around and around. That's my little guy's lightning tail, and A, Pokemon is an anime, not a cartoon. Learn the difference. It's a cartoon. Hi, Bugs and Bunny. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Bunny, a cartoon. <laughs> That'd be a lot funnier if Stampede. That'd actually be a lot funnier if either of us had one of the bunny Pokemon. Yeah. Let's see what Fire Punch can do. Sucker Punch? Wow. That did a lot more than I thought it would, but let's see what mine does. Oh, dang it! <laughs> really? <laughs> just, to put, just to put fuel into the fire. Wow. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me what the whammies desire. Ooh! Well, since you're burned, it won't do that much. It's critical hit, of course. Okay. Deliver the final whammy to Markin. Mary wins the first round. Badly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Round two, I'm going to switch things up. Uh, Five. Yeah. Oh. There's yeah. going to be some switching done. No, I'm not saving it. Yeah, sorry, Mirchi. You scratch that. Ah. Oh. Oh well, two zero. -oh. Remember, I'm still trying to find tweak things with these guys. I know. Plus, I always interchange. Yeah, might as well save it. It's with you, of course. Yeah, and it's a double battle. Your first one, right? Well, I usually don't do double, mainly yeah. because XD and Coliseum made me sick of double battles. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> almost everything in that game was a double battle. So now we have a triple battle coming up. Okay, this kind of works. Maybe. Mm. Well, at least it didn't get to the Halucha. Pixie? Oh, God, it has a pixie plate. Oh, God, dang it. <laughs> My plan just got neutered. Now do you understand why I had both of my dogs on the opposite side? Yeah, my, my ride-on just got completely and utterly neutered. Yeah, and in addition, if I would have had Bourdais at what I wanted to do and yeah, had him instead of Surfy... That's, everybody, that's, that's, that's everybody getting neutered to heck. That's the plan. Now, let's see what we got here. Oh, I think I understand what you did with this group. Yeah. Does your ride on have earthquake? We have a winner, folks. Okay. Well, I I'm gonna see. Two flyers to the side, so I could get all three of them. Well, I'm gonna see if I can stop that. You probably. Well, you already did. You neutered. Wow. That took it like a champ. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, hit! Hi, yeah. jump kick! Arr, I, uh, stupid, stupid, stupid intimidate. <laughs> ah! What? One HP. That's what I thought it was. Okay, will any of you die? After two intimidates. Well, Weldon, oh, Weldon well, did not. Fire Doggy did. I got one of them. Nah. And so Surfy left over. my plan didn't completely fail. 
<laughs> but still, yeah, Halucha yeah. leads that player off by one. See? Yep, I see that. One. Wow. Also, bye. What? <laughs> of course, conveniently <laughs> snaps out of confusion. <laughs> well, it's been out of play for a few turns, so I assume it will recover by now. Oh, well, dang. So there goes that, your oh. trump card. Yeah, there goes that. Oh, well. Let's do this. Oh, oh. no. Yep. Orange! Uh, dang it. Wow. Now it's down um, to the keys of doom. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in my life, I found someone that's way better at Pokemon than me. <laughs> Yes, yeah, TNT. Yeah, I thought you read my mind. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh. Did they make it to the line? Yes. Let's finish this. Here. Don't you dare activate that's the Nima commentator! That's Nemechek. That's Nemechek. Nemechek, stand down! Yeah, that's Nemechek. Now, block crafting! Sauter's got it. I don't uh -oh. know, hang on. He got it. WTF of Hell in a Cell 2013, Fandango beat the Great Kali. For what possible reason are you doing that? I don't know. Then don't do it. <laughs> we had the Unification title match. WWE title and the World Heavyweight title with Cena and or just the champions merged together in one big letter match. And what happens? Guess what, Cena Booers? Your rage outs are inaccurate because it was Orton wins law. Don't give me that look. That's what it was. Orton wins law. Now you see one that big with Randy Orton. Oh no, John Cena, he wins too much. We don't want Cena. No, 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 no. Why does Randy Orton get more of whatever heck he wants? Yes. Because it's Randy Orton. Oh, third gen superstar. He doesn't have to do anything. Oh, let him smoke all the pot he wants. <laughs> oh, he can do anything he wants. Let's push him the champion. Yeah. Give me a break. Orton wins law. The end. See what I go through on a daily basis. Yes, and that's why I love you. Yeah, that's true. I'm the only one that puts up with her. I beg your pardon. So, oh boy, this one's going to cause a stir. Probably not. Because here's the thing. We told you earlier in the video that the last pay-per-view that was done before this was 2014 SummerSlam. So guess what? The number two pay-per-view, 2014 SummerSlam! The fastest fail in WWE history. Okay, think back to the previous year Royal Rubble. Remember when The Rock, as a part-timer, won the WWE title? Yeah, some people were happy about it, because CM Punk was getting a little bit annoying. But pretty much everyone else was like, Man, you know what? The Rock is champ. He's a part timer. There's going to be no more pay-per-view matches with the title. Ah. Enter Brock Lesnar, who's a part timer. Takes on John Cena. Oh, he wants Lesnar to win. Go, Lesnar, go. Ah, we forgive you for breaking the streak. We forgive you for being a Heyman guy. Just be Cena. Give me a break, people. Make up your damn mind. You don't go one way this way, and then the other way just because it's John Cena. Give me a break. If Brock Lesnar took on Randy Orton, I'd rather have Randy Orton win. Because at least I'll be guaranteed to see Orton in the next event. No. Oh, and by the way, it was a dominated match by Lesnar. Where's your Super Cena now? Yes.
Yes. Go ahead, tell me, where's Super Cena? Probably still on the floor. England, this is your fault for number eight. I cannot stand this guy because of you people from England. You're also the reason I cannot stand the Raw after WrestleMania anymore. Because you people from England always ruin it. And as you can tell, the person he's mimicking is one of the reasons why. <laughs> Here's to you, Mr. Really, Really, Really Bad Dancer. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and this one's going to be even worse because we have JBL. What do you think, Mary? What possible logic do you have to defend this Yahoo? He already has a brain, and it's a pretty darn good one at that. <laughs> Make fun of Michael Cole and say $9.99 every 20 seconds. By the way, guys, WWE Network incredible value for just $9.99. I'm Bradshaw, I'm the champion, I'm supposed to be a wrestling god! No, you're, you're not saying it right. Wrestling god. That's what I said. You gotta have the emphasis. I just did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No. Yes, 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 yes! Ziggler. Billy Gunn wannabe. All he does is shake his butt and does everything just like Billy Gunn. It's like if you had this creator wrestler in one of those Attitude Era games, like the SmackDown Know Your Role game, and create Dolph Ziggler. Name it Dolph Ziggler. Then give him Billy Gunn's moveset. That's Dolph Ziggler. Well, he has adapted it. But it's a good idea. That would be like creating a female wrestler with my name and my stuff and put it in Undertaker's moveset. That'd actually be cool. Ah, thanks, Han. But it'd be disrespectful. Besides, Undertaker doesn't like gimmick infringement. See the Undertaker Rooney video. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> but, Wrestling psychic is in the room. Smarter than them all. <laughs> What's Undertaker's real name? David what? Mark Calloway. It was David. No. Mark Calloway. Yeah. Anyway. Married a bony bitch. <laughs> Warning, do not believe a thing that this guy is about to say for this very last person, because this is the one guy I will under no circumstance agree about anything on anything. For the rest of you who wish to hear his piece, go ahead. But be warned, do not believe a thing that this guy is about to say about the one person that I cannot stand more than anyone else in the universe, including Randy Orton. Ready, go. Help, I'm trapped. I'm being held hostage. Please send your reward money to the following location. We're talking about Paul Heyman. ESPN quote decided to go with a different direction. That direction was Alan Bestwick, which I didn't mind considering he's my second favorite racing announcer ever behind Bob Jenkins. Perhaps him coming back isn't likely after all. Though we know Bob Varsha wants him back, right Marty Snyder? Let's go to Marty Reed now with Ryan Hunter Ray. I'm Marty Reed. Excuse me, Marty. Marty Snyder. That's all right, Bob Varsha. Yeah. That's okay. You can uh, call me another name. Wow. Marty Reed has more on that man. James, uh, excuse me. I did it again. Marty, I apologize. Marty That's Snyder right. on James kind of, H. Baby. Hello, Cal. Oh, How you doing today? <laughs> what are you going towards me for? What the frick is on? Oh, she is um, seven months old. Look, there's more over here. This whole stable is great. Mm-hmm. I heard that. Are you jealous? <laughs> hey, why are you trying to eat me? You were trying to eat me. You were trying to eat me. This cat was trying to eat me. Mom. Look at pony. <laughs> Try something up for attack already, aren't you? <laughs> I know, really. Got that Pokemon instinct. Gonna use double kick, aren't uh, you? I know. He's a good boy. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, a little rapidash. Aren't you rapidash? No, rapidash has a horn. You'd be a pony top. Thank you, too. Okay. Adorable. Don't have a cow try to eat me and that try to kick me. Oh, look at you. Oh, look at you. Oh, uh, like this? Yeah. Uh, for 40 bucks? Should I go for it? Go for it. <laughs> All right. Okay, everybody. Yay or nay? <laughs> it's just not going to work while the wind's blowing. <laughs> okay, so after 25 minutes, here's the caricature that was done of me. Me and my gold hair, apparently, but that'll work. And, of course, I'm wearing my Johnny Benson hat, so what does he do? <laughs> he <can't try. laughs> oh, I dare someone to send this to Johnny's Twitter page. Let him see this. <laughs> Thank you. They got my name, too. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Look at her in a black suit. That's cute. Thank you, Wolf. I appreciate it. He signed a wolf to hold my shirt. Ow. Has to be. Look at this. This totally says Kellis region. The scooter. Someone was on a scooter. The purse. The girl wears. Uh, I don't think those shoes were in there though, and I don't want them in there because I don't do that. The glasses you can wear on top of your hat. There's no perfume I'm aware of, and there's the Lumios Gym. Hardy heart heart. And I had to bring out Undertaker. Let the fun begin. Unleash Mega Undertaker. So I use the Dragon Dance, which will be very useful, as you'll see. Earthquake nearly gets rid of it, and that freaked me out there. So I had no choice but to try to get rid of it. Right now with the Crunch, because that is actually Undertaker's strongest move. Now he brings in the Heliolisk. I thought he'd be faster. He wasn't. Crunch. Crit. Crit Crunch, I guess. But I couldn't believe that. Then he brings in Trevenant, which I knew was weak to a lot of Undertaker's moves, so I just crunched it. And last but not least, the Espeon. Three, two, one, blam. And that is how you do it. Down four to one, and Mega Undertaker comes through. Awesome. Great battle with uh, DMX. Uh, great effort by him, getting rid of most of my Pokemon. But uh, Mega Undertaker, what else can you do? I'm finally going to tell you my opinion about who the best drivers of NASCAR is. So if Richard Petty was number two, who among the remaining nominees could possibly be number one? Alright, I've made you wait long enough. Here is number one. <laughs> Zoops, wrong countdown. <laughs> That's the number one person for top ten favorite NASCAR drivers. But you pretty much know that because he's in all my intros. Anyway, here's the real number one. was Mike Wallace doing when the red flag came out in the Xfinity race during the first big one? To be fair. To be fair. Yo, to be Fenton Carson number 14, his presence falls on all them machines. Where is he at? He was always unseen. He's got a caution all because he's to be Fenton. When the caution is thrown, the fans race quick because they know the caution was not legit. Most of the drivers are thrown to a fit. NASCAR turned the race into a pizza.
He is never seen out on the track, but when he's there, everything is out of whack. He is Brian's friend to help him get his way. You want this guy to win? Well, not today. He is at the race to help NASCAR's group, but the good guys know what they have to do. If we don't stop the bad guys, this race is through. He's got a cousin all because he's to be fans, and he's got a cousin all because he's to be fans, and he's got a cousin all because he's to be fans. I bring in the Dragon Pulse that actually critted, but it wasn't enough, and Sacred Fire uh, took it out thanks to a dang burn. But then we get the battle that everyone has been waiting for. Ho-Oh versus Ho-Oh. Now, the Stealth Rock beats it badly, but not good enough because Brave Bird, uh, I know for a fact that Benson's faster, and bang, that's it. So, uh, Ho-Oh won the battle for me today. Thank you, Benson. And thank you to my entire team, and thank you to Samurai Lord for the very awesome battle. I very much enjoyed this battle. I always love using Ho-Oh Blast because it's my favorite Pokemon. And that was definitely one of the best battles I've ever had. I thank you. I thank everyone in this entire thing so much. All the 12 Pokemon and my opponent. That was so awesome. And this is our password. <laughs> this shouldn't be too hard. Okay, here's, our, here's my lovely, lovely drawing. And your guess? <laughs> what the <laughs> What's the <laughs> That was like an enemy from one of those Sonic games. Your guess? At first I thought it was Slurpuff, and then what the heck? And then I thought it was Pharaoh Seed, but <laughs> Okay. Uh <laughs> Okay, uh, let me think. It's gotta be something stupid-ish. No, it's, it's not Fungus. It can't be Fungus, because Fungus doesn't have legs. Yeah. Oh, God. I know it's so bad. The only possible thing I can come up with is Carablast. Uh, point to you. Point to you. Or no, point to me. You got it wrong. It's CDOT. <laughs> that is not CDOT! CDOT does not have arms! <laughs> That's lame! <laughs> oh no, I know. Wait. CDOT does not have. <laughs> that is the worst CDOT ever! <laughs> Advantage me. <laughs> so, your turn! <laughs> that is not CDOT! <laughs> okay, let me cover up. Okay, what have I got? Oh my god. Oh no. Easiest thing ever! I'm already calling it right now. But I'm not gonna waste the points. Ready? Hold on one second. I, I think I might know what this could be. You said easiest thing ever. Yeah. Ready? Yes. Steady. Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> You're done. Yes. You still have five seconds. How can you not get that? Let me see it. Love disc. <laughs> it's love disc. It's totally it's love serious. disc. Point to me. <laughs> no, point to me, because I drew it right. No, I guessed it correctly. Remember, it was if you guessed it, you got it. If you didn't guess it, I got it. <laughs> Remember? I'll figure it out. Okay, here's our drawing. <laughs> I think I got this one. Your guess? I think it's Armaldo. No, you're wrong. How is that not Armaldo? <laughs> That's Quagsire. Oh, bull crap! Did, oh, Quagsire does not have the spiky things on its back. Yes, it does. Look no, it does back. not. Yeah, it does. Look at its back sprite. Look at its back sprite. That it, is bull. And even at that, it doesn't have a spiky tail. I was trying to curve it. I was trying to make it a perfect curve, but I failed at it. Ah, oh, bull. Your turn. <laughs> Your turn. Stupid. Oh my goodness. Okay. That is what I'm drawing, and I'm probably going to do very terrible at it. Okay, you may uncover now. This, this is very bad. This is very bad. <laughs> it's very bad. <laughs> what the fuck is this? This is very bad. 
You drove a Barbaroach with a human body. What the freak is on? It's not even a Barbaroach. I know that, idiot. Excuse me. This is literally a Barbaroach with a human body. Why did you draw that? <laughs> All right. Okay, a four-legged person with antlers. Hmm. Huh? Not even close. Let me think. I'm trying to think who has a bulged head. I I drew the head way wrong. I didn't mean to draw the head wrong. Hmm. The only Pokemon coming to my mind is Agron. Nope, give me the point. Here's the answer. What? Celebi. Doesn't even have wings! I forgot to put the wings. I ran out of time. For the love of God, make it Voltorb. It's not. I don't even think I'm going to get this. Shoot, I got to stop. Uh, I didn't finish, and this is how bad it looks. Let me take a look. Okay, you didn't finish the head. That's a curly tail. So basically, it's a lily with a curly tail. So, what Pokemon would that match the most? It has wings, a curly That's tail. That's not wings. Those what? are hands. Well, what's that thing, then? That, I was trying to start the head. The head. Alright, what Pokemon has squiggles across its belly? With a curly tail. There's two I'm thinking of. Okay. Electabuzz. Ron, what was your other guess? Electivire. Ron and both counts. Cacleon. What? what? <laughs> Cacleon's arms did not look like this. <laughs> hey. Let's start over and try to get the rules correct. And I'm one point away from winning. Oh, bull. Which means I could sandbag. But I'm not gonna. Could sandbag? I'm not gonna sandbag. I'm gonna give it an honest effort. A quack sire with bumps on its back like an Armaldo. Look at the back sprite. It has... A sea dot with arms. A barbaroach with a full body. A... Litwick with a tail that you claim is a cat. By the way, it generated Quagsire again. No, 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 no repeats. No, 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 no. Oh, I can't do Quagsire again? Oh, no, because okay. you're going to draw Armaldo again. And then claim it's Quagsire. It was not Armaldo. Yes, it is Armaldo! You botched the rules. I didn't botch the rules. Yes, you did. Okay. How was that supposed to help? This is Top 10 Countdown. WTF Cautions. They say there is debris in the groove in turn one, and there it is. Piece of paper. Oh, please don't tell me it's paper. It's a piece of paper. But okay. see, again, just like what happened to us at Charlotte, it, it ha if it had a little shine to it, you look at it, how do you know for sure? Binoculars. Well, well. Oh, please don't tell me it's paper. 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 Today's her big 25th birthday. Yeah, you got that right. She's turning 25 today. Get it right. This is my way of saying happy birthday to my best friend. You should have there's a big crown on your head and a little <laughs> thing right here that says, yeah, it's my birthday. I'm the fucking queen, damn it! <laughs> yeah, uh, basically my plan for the uh, birthday day was basically hang out with him for a little bit. And then when I uh, get back to the house, my family and my boyfriend will be at the house because uh, my boyfriend had morning shift. Eh. Yeah. So, that's basically the reason why we decided to do the hangout day in the morning portion of the day. And I took this day off to do this day too, so I'm glad my job did that. It's the old saying, rather be a smart ass than a dumbass. Well, that's true. Then again, I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumbass, and of course, it's somebody's jackass. 
to me, America's Funniest Home Video was still a reality show. Now, pretty much in the last episode, Tom Bergeron was surprised by the original host himself. Yeah. Bob Saget. Yeah. All I know is that you could have brought Bob back. That would have been nice to see him do this stuff again. I know he's getting old, but come on. He is the original host. That would be nice to see. Just to hear him going, just to say, he say, he say, hey, look at that. It's really, ah. You know, do his funny voices. That's, he did all the voices on the original show. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the CSI. Her wish came true. Now, if you can do the other, the other wish. One of them. Yeah, one of her wishes came true. CSI regular is done. One down and how many to go? Uh, so many to go. Now, we can get rid of NCIS, yeah, or in her words, and I quote, NCBS. <laughs> what that stands for? Oh, NCB. Oh, got it. Because it's pretty much on CBS and CSIS and CIS, so we minus the I and the B. No crime bullshit. <laughs> hey, sounds good. Like you said before, no crime investigation shit, okay? <laughs> That's a good one. That's what it is. Got him, got him. I can come up with more. <laughs> No, no more, no more crime investigation shit. Yes, I'm gonna write that down. Don't take that. That's mine. I trade my my work, my trademarks, my copyrights. Take it. You own, I own you. Okay. Eventually, there we go. From the moment a puppy comes into the world. Oh God. <laughs> the soul of a man is also worthless. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Everybody gets goofy hats. So your other hat can take a break. Richard Petty holds the record for the most races started and run in one racer's career. Jeff Gordon recently became NASCAR's all-time Iron Man. That same weekend, the Truck Series celebrated its 500th race. All of them important and special in their own way, shape, and form. Today, I'm not going to talk about anything close to that. Today, I bring you a countdown of drivers who have done only one NASCAR National Touring Series race ever. Yeah, that's right. Nothing involving this list could be complete without this guy. You don't know who he is, do you? Well, what if I told you that he was the father of a NASCAR Dozen member? Yes, this guy. Do you know who he is? Do you know who he is now? No racing reference did not mess up my favorite driver's page. This is actually the racing reference page for my favorite NASCAR driver's father. That's right. This is the area for one Johnny Benson Sr. After a few years, I finally get to do Top 10 Countdown. Memorable Bill Weber. Quotes. When you come to Daytona, you have to make sure of one thing. You have the proper parking pass. <laughs> Otherwise, you will be towed. Man, it's a pair of bucket Broncos. Yeah. Gonna be at a strike in a blistering time of 9.25 seconds and a whole shot. Phil Broncos, your race winner. Now you don't have to look it up because we already did. All the poems you ever hear are about that pesky whammy. He dances and jives in front of the screen so you'll go home and cry to your mammy. But the creature featured in this little tale is the voice with the stellar body. No, it's not the host or the producer you see, it's the remarkable Rappin' Rod Roddy. <laughs> now, now Rappin' Rod, now Rappin' Rod is a stellar old boy who entertains the audience right. His voice is dynamic with pronunciation, you see, but his clothes will give you a fright. <laughs> he gives away prizes and gifts to all, while both the contestants and audience keep a harkin. The only thing rappin' Rod Roddy lacks is the sex appeal of Peter Tamarkin. <laughs> Thanks for having us in for the race on TNT. 
So let's start this failtacular countdown with everybody's favorite coward, Matt Kenseth. All right, so the race before the Ulster race had a little bit of a hiccup that year. Luckily, the Ulster race itself has never had a very bizarre opening lap accident. Oh, wait. And Steve Park, boy, real loose on the start, almost bunch, spun. A bunch of guys did. Uh, Jeff Burton got in the back of Tony Stewart and turned him sideways. Oh, car sideways. All, all the cars are loose down in the corner. The track is wet. It's Gordon, Gordon, Michael Walter, Kevin 29 Martin. car. All these cars are wrecking because I believe it might be raining down there. And the rain is Look, coming it's even raining. harder. Oh, for Pete's sake. What a way to start this event. If you want to see my idea of what I believe a NASCAR hate or NASCAR troll channel looks like, just watch the following video. Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Pink Car, and today on episode 82 of the Pink Car blog, we're going to talk about Matt Kenseth and Joey Logano. Let's face it, they both suck. I don't care if the point of NASCAR is to wreck each other every single week, but the fact that they're always willing to wreck each other and make up stupid excuses for them wrecking each other means only one thing. They both suck. However, I know the one common thing that these two guys have that makes them a bullseye in their stupidity. When it comes down to it, the common connection is the color yellow. It's an obvious fact that yellow is not a good color. It sucks. Yellow doesn't look good on anything. And obviously from these two, it makes people dumber. As these two are proven with them crashing and complaining towards each other. You know what makes them smarter and better as drivers? Pink. There's a reason that pink is associated with a lot of goodness and yellow is associated with a lot of badness. If those two morons wore pink instead of yellow, they'd be a bazillion times better as a waste car driver and as a man. Each of them. Let's take this picture of Matt Kansas and pinkify him. Pink, 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 pink. Doesn't he look better already? His wasting IQ went up at least 70 points just by changing the color on his outfit. Let's not do the same thing to Joey Logano and pinkify him. Pink, 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 pink. He looks much better too. Now these two can waste each other and all those other guys in the waste cars and not take each other out anymore. Get the yellow out of NASCAR and replace it with pink and everything will be better. I've been saying this for such a long time now. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week to see why Dale Earnhardt and Darlington should have married each other just based on their signature nicknames alone. And then go pink. If you missed last week's pink car blog, be sure to watch it. Thank you very much for watching and go pink car! That's fucking bullshit.
Daryl Stark finish line. Watch this silver car on the outside. That's Daryl Walter. It's a black car. It's Dale Earnhardt. And we're going to freeze it right here. See, those cars make contact right there, just barely, not much. Now we'll move the tape on forward, and we'll see what happens, buddy. Well, you can see Daryl giving a little bit of room. He gets on the high side of the racetrack, and he says, I don't want to be out here. I need to get back in traffic. He did not see Johnny Benson on the inside. He tries to get back on the bottom part of the racetrack, contact, and watch the cars behind him. See, Earnhardt gets into the back of the 30 car, and then that Bill Elliott's car that, that gets involved there as well. They seem, seem to think it started between you and Earnhardt. What do you think? No, no, Benson. Actually, Benson's the one. I, I got down in there and uh, I had an opening there. Benson looked like he didn't get a good start or something. And I was going to fall in front of Dale. We kind of talked about it. But they didn't go very good. So I went on down. I got to the first turn. A great opportunity to drop to the inside in front of Benson as I started in and, and I was in the groove. I don't know if he went on the apron or what he did, but uh, I'm pretty sure he's the one that turned me around. At least I think he was. Uh, I got yellow paint on my car, so I'd say he probably was. This is Top 20 Countdown. NASCAR nicknames that need to die. Horse face. Just why? Oh, l listen to this. Herbert. Hey guys, we got a fight going on down here. We got Doug Herbert and the Clay Milliken crews going at it. Looks like we're at a NASCAR race. <laughs> <laughs> intended to start this video, but okay, that works. Johnny Sauter, <laughs> you're winning at Daytona. The race for the championship, Sauter wins at Martinsville. Yeah. Yeah. Sauter is going to go two for two. Johnny Sauter wins at Texas. Be careful with your burnouts, Johnny. We're going to race this truck one more time this year. And it's the 21 of Johnny Sauter with his first ever NASCAR championship. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Johnny Sauter. Finally, a NASCAR champion. Couldn't be more proud of everybody on this Allegiant Travel uh, Chevrolet. Thank more Gallagher, the Gallagher family, everybody that gave me this opportunity. On behalf of NASCAR and all your fans and all the fans of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, we're honored to make you our 2016 champion. You've earned it, and congratulations. Let's hear it for him. Johnny Sauter, your champion. I was told that I was absolutely insane. First word that comes to mind is absurd, uh, to be quite honest. I mean, I <laughs> and, and look at the ratings, how they have dropped over the years. People just will not stay glued to that television set for three to four hours. Brainless France is trying to ruin NASCAR bit by bit. You know what, if you want to deep Johnson flies the chase, here's how you do it. Get rid of the chase. I've said it since day one. Dumb idea, and it's still a dumb idea. No matter what manner of advancements you make, no matter how much you screw it up, it's still going to be a screw up from day one. Get rid of it. Get rid of the chase. I've been saying it since day one. Stuff like this is why the chase should not exist. If the chase did not exist, none of this crap would happen. I think that uh, for all the folks that have been asking us to get rid of the chase for years, this is it's a great day this for them. This is your moment. Well put. Moment. Yeah. That's a better yeah. answer. <laughs> we took it literally. Are you going to drop the mic on that? 
This is Top 15 Countdown, WTF Auto Racing Moments of 2016. Okay then, next, oh no. <laughs> Believe it or not, NASCAR was also involved in this, because <laughs> right before election day and stuff, that week at Texas, Reed Sorensen's car was sponsored by the Trump campaign. Because no one says the Trump campaign more than Reed Sorensen. No. Okay. Boy, driving number 30. Oh, okay. That's who you're talking about. Car 5J will be Daryl Dow out of Chesapeake, Virginia. So Daryl Dell is his name. And in car number 32. Yeah. Well, that one. <laughs> that. Come on. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have fun with this one because the car I told you about earlier is in it. Let's see if it happens again. Meanwhile, the car that had Let's go. Casey Kane actually did something. 
And AJ Allmendinger got what in the hell? Timmy Hill 14. Matthew Benedetto finished eighth. What the hell happened at this racetrack? Is your Pokemon able to another Pokemon? No. Just ask that. Something so important you were thinking of, Mr. Mime. Am I right? No. Okay. Is it more than two feet long? Yes! That's what I thought. Is your Pokemon always female? No! That's interesting. That's it. I got it. If I'm not mistaken, you were thinking of Bulbasaur. Is that it? No! Can you repeat? No! Okay. Oh, I think I know. I believe you were thinking of Pikachu. Am I right? No. Okay. Close. Is it a normal type? No. Uh, just a few more questions now. Is your Pokemon always male? No. Uh, I see. Is it a grass type? No. Uh, uh -huh. Is there a flame burning at the tip of your Pokemon's tail? No. Uh, okay. I think I found it. Something tells you you were thinking of. Alakazam! Is that it? No! Okay. Mm -hmm. You got me. I must have misunderstood you. Let's give it another try. Can I show we can get this? Try three. I'm trying to get the thing right, you. I'm trying to get the new Pokemon now. Look in your field guide for ideas. I got the thing about right you. Say okay when you're ready. Okay. Nice. Is your Pokemon mainly brown? No. That's what I thought. Is it mainly yellow? No. Interesting. Does it have a lake? Yes. I see. Does your Pokemon have a tail? Yes. Uh-huh. Did your Pokemon evolve from another Pokemon? Yes. Okay. Does it have one or several horns? No. That's what I thought. Is your Pokemon a dual type? No. Interesting. Is it a fire type? No. I see. Is your Pokemon mainly blue? No. No. Okay. Can your Pokemon evolve into another Pokemon? No. That's what I thought. That's it. I got it. If I'm not mistaken, you were thinking of Sandslash. Am I right? No. Okay. So we started with. Is it a poison type? No. Interesting. Does your Pokemon have a shell? No. I see. Does it have large pointed teeth? No. Uh -huh. Is your Pokemon mainly pink? No. Uh -huh. Okay. Does your Pokemon usually stand on two legs? Yes. Can you repeat? Yes. Is your Pokemon mainly pink? No. Uh -huh. Just pass that. Does it usually stand on two legs? Yes. He already asked that. Interesting. Does its name begin with the letter M for moon? No. I see. Does its name begin with the letter B for pilot? No. Uh -huh. Oh, I think I know. No, you don't. I believe you were thinking of Raichu. Is that it? Yes! Great. We found Raichu. Not with you, it took you four tries to get right, you. Pokemon guest, Pokemon trainer guest, you suck. Bye. Welcome back to Long Beach. Those of you that have recorded the NASCAR race from Texas, mute your television now. We're going to tell you the winner.
Congratulations, Jimmy Johnson, on winning at Texas in the NASCAR race. And he's oh, going to put some butts in the seat. My radio cord came out on lap 79, so I drove almost to the end of the race with no radio. Oh, my God, someone flipped. Ladies and gentlemen, the ever-popular blooper of the year. For the first time since the Daytona 500 in February, Kyle Busch is on the final lap en route to a stage one win. He won last night's truck race after race leader Ben Rhodes lost an engine. You know why? It's go time. That's right. This could be the last restart. 46 to go. Trevor Bain holds him off for the moment. Does Kyle get the big run on the top, or does Bain come up and close him off? Or rather, yeah, Blaney. Excuse Blaney me, Blaney. Did, did, Blaney did a great job of moving up and shutting that move down. But Joey Logano, want, he doesn't want that 42 to get away. I think he's got him where he wants him if he can get around him. But Larson can't lap Matt Bede uh You know, we know. Do we bet? <laughs> yeah. That guy. De Benedetto. <laughs> well, you Goodness. know what? This is what kept... De Benedetto in the game and in a top 10 position here a year ago. Here comes Truex to the bottom. Truex says, y'all going up there and work on a De Benedetto. I'm going to pass you both. Jamie. You know, Mike, we had a number of drivers out there like Kyle Busch, Dave Blaney, Mark Truex Jr. They needed this caution. They were going to have to make a green flag stop. <laughs> Two to go. There you go. Caution. Cole Whip has brought out the caution. Not, no caution. Oh, no excuse caution. me. Sorry, had a voice in my ear. No caution. We stay green. And there is Cole Whip. Get off the track. Oh, we Get are still, we're Get still green. How on earth did Mike Joy have four nominations in this category and none of them won? Was there a fifth I'm not aware of? Let's find out. All right. Can I have the envelope, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, what on earth could be worse than all that? All right. All right, I got to watch this for myself because I don't remember this one. And the winner of the 2017 Blooper of the Year goes to Phil Parsons. <laughs> We're getting in the window now with 53 laps to go. If the caution flag were to come out right now, most all these guys would be able to make it from here. I asked about 15 different crew chiefs down in the garage area. If the caution comes out with 50 laps to go, what do you do? Half of them said, we put tires on. We're afraid not to put them on. The other half said, I want to save my tires till later. And then, and then yet another half, which is now three halves. I get it. They I'm say, with you, Phil. I want to come in and put fuel only in so I make sure I have enough fuel to get to the end. And half of those halves were lying to you. <laughs> exactly. Because they don't want the rest of the competition <laughs> to know what they've got in mind. Uh, I want to be in your math class. <laughs> a lot I of got halves. three halves. <laughs> Reason, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey guys, as we watched the two car, Austin Dillon slip back here, not exactly happy with the handling inside the race car. He had this to say on the radio a little bit ago about a lapper on the track. That guy off the freaking track, man. Where'd he get a license to do this? I don't know. Walmart. And guys, the lap where he's talking about is Cesar Baccarello in the eight car who was involved in the incident with the 48 of Brennan Poole. Obviously not making many friends out there, not getting out of the way for these lead cars. We aren't surprised that Martin Truex Jr. was able to win that stage. And we're also not surprised Denny Hamlin was speeding on pit road. Stay in the ball. Accommodation. So please, uh, don't, don't be fooled. 
Go to the box. There is Benson and Wow! <laughs> okay, I don't need max special attack, but that works for me. I could just do the hyper train thing with attack and defense, but we have a winner! Love Ball Ho Ho on Johnny Benson's birthday is complete. Mischievous, which Johnny really isn't, but that's okay. <laughs> I got Love Ball Benson. Yay! Are you tired of boring good old clean racing? Racers racing side by side against each other, not hitting and bumping each other and crashing each other. Well, do we have the racing series for you. Just come on down to watch the Super Kyle Demolition Derby Racing Series. All throughout the year, all of our awesome drivers compete on tour, crashing and bashing into each other. It's like a demolition derby and a race all in one. See such high-level crashing stars like Kyle Larson, Kyle Kresselhoff, Kyle Benjamin, Kyle Kaiser, Kyle Weatherman, and everybody's favorite, Kyle Bush! Tickets on sale now for only $18! Kids 18 and under get in free! Worry you won't be able to come out to see the event live? No problem! Enjoy us on the television and watch the event win supportive commentary of the world's most incredible announcer, Kyle Petty! That's incredible! It's the smashing, bashing, crash fest with the extreme excitement level that racing has been missing for so long! And you get this excitement in every single event! Come on down to cheer on your favorite Kyle. It won't matter anyway because regardless of what you see at the event, Kyle Bush always wins. Because like Kyle Bush always says, If you don't like that kind of racing, don't even watch. But you will watch because any exciting crash bash event that Kyle Bush wins is the race that you want to see. Kyle Bush approve. Check out our schedule on our website and start planning for your own trip to a Super Kyle Demolition Derby Racing Series event today! Ryan France out there talking about effective drug policy. It's kind of like Al Capone talking about effective law enforcement. The pot shouldn't be calling the kettle black, and I think the world needs to hear that too. Well, this didn't take long. In this instance... He failed plenty of different sobriety tests and stuff. Okay, come on! This is the second time the power's gone out here today. Anyway, I'll con- Exactly. Anyway, I'll continue. Anyway, the blood alcohol level- And the lights turned back on. <laughs> Brian, if you watch my video, I doubt you do, but I would love it if you watch my video. Here is something that- I think you need to know right now. There are way more things that are more important right now for you than trying to run NASCAR in your crazy-fied way to the point where even without this, people are still going to hate on you for what they and people like me believe you have done to NASCAR. Now is the perfect time to get out of this kind of ridiculousness. Because hurting NASCAR is not the issue here, dude. Hurting yourself is the issue. All of these kinds of issues that have been going on for years, 
the 2006 thing is the reason everyone believed you're a Yahoo to begin with in terms of this situation. And this situation, 12 years later, just confirmed everything that what happened in 06 was true and what Jeremy Mayfield said about you. By the way, you owe him an apology. I suggest you do it. I found a story one time doing random searches on my drivers. And I found a very funny story that, to me, I do not think was true. Ain't no way. <laughs> so, uh, what happened is, in this story, I found pictures of what was supposed to be a second team for PPI Motorsports, if you remember that team. And, uh... <laughs> What happened was, is that Cal Wells was thinking of reviving the 96 car, most known for his failed attempt to guinea pig Andy Houston. And the driver he was going to try to get to, to drive the 96, when he tried to revive the car in 2004, was, of course, the top guy of the NASCAR dozen, Johnny Benson, after he was ditched from Phoenix Racing for absolutely no reason. And the sponsor they were trying to get was MTV. So, my thought process of this is similar to one of the comments I'd seen to said story. <laughs> and this is essentially my version of it. Johnny Benson plus MTV doesn't mix. <laughs> There's no freaking when Andy Houston was sponsored by McDonald's, he admitted that he ate at McDonald's very little. <laughs> There's no way I can see Johnny Benson doing anything with MTV. Now, if that wasn't bad enough. <laughs> Jeff Green has the Petty's number 43 Dodge. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! paint scheme, a popular animated TV show and trading card game. Got Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. Is that it? Yu-Gi-Oh? It means let's duel. Yu-Gi-Oh. I've heard it say Yu-Gi-Oh! I've heard it say Yu-Gi-Oh! So let me ask, kind of like the film if you're talking to a five-year-old or a 12-year-old. On one side is, is that guy. I'm not even going to try to say it. <laughs> and on the other side... And, and you would be in which category? <laughs> it's his main rival. It, I'm not trying to say his name either. It doesn't matter. Pokemon was so easy to say. I don't even know what happened. Pikachu. That is quite a busy paint scheme right there. Wow. And so what is his rival's name? I'm, uh, it's K-A-I-B-A. K-A-I-B-A or something. That's his uh, name. Yeah, I don't know. I'm asking a dad. You know the rival's name? K I K I K A I B A K I B A. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a 30-minute special okay. on that. <laughs> That's right. Well, Sorry, guys. On. I can't help you with that. But Yu-Gi-Oh, we're going to ten years old. Okay. Well, I'm glad we got that. It's They're animated characters. We do know that. I can read Dodge. What was the question? What was the? I, well, what happened to me? Because in the uh, Arca stream oh, I, I did on my channel, uh, she's like. Someone said, make a bus video on, on Ultimate 23 Dragon. That's the only way. And then I, I was like, you know what? Maybe I will. But then I slept on it. And I was like, you know what? I don't know. I don't want to just, like, call her out on that and stuff. I mean, she hasn't done anything to me. So yeah. you, you guys have to convince her to make a video about me first. And then I'll make a video. The fans got to start the drama, and we'll just so fan the play. You guys got to start the drama, not me. They didn't have to convince me because you did. Okay, Wes Graham's like, can we, like, start roasting her? And I'm like, do it. I dare you. And he responds, I don't know that much about her. <laughs> Took your guys' word for it. <laughs> Mike yeah. Joy is going to flip out for peace, like, and, and happiness here. Because if, if anyone hasn't noticed yet, Mike Joy, for some reason, is strangely fascinated with Ryan Newman's bland personality. Speaking of, <laughs> think of Ron, think of Ron anyway. No, it was oh, so Nick Newman. That was so... Oh, I'm, I'm gonna do an impersonation of her. <clears throat> oh, oh God! Oh, please! I'm not asking you. Don't do that. I don't Have want I like... ever heard of a YouTuber by the name of Black Flags Matter? <laughs> In fact, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Um, Is it safe to put the earbuds back in. <laughs> yes. It, yeah, you're good. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay. Well, do you actually think 
my voice is a combination of a 70-year-old grandmother and Yuma Tsukumo from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. I just thought about this, like, hey, it'd be cool to get a, a real-life meme on the podcast in, in Ultimate 23 Dragon, but I just remembered I'm on here, and I said John Derry, so I'm kind of jealous. Oh, oh, yeah, you're the meme. So, yeah. so I, I, I honestly shouldn't be talking, so... uh you're either <laughs> like, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah, wasn't the last driver to win in the 10 car like Johnny Benson? It was. It was <laughs> Johnny Benson. Rockingham. I that out. I pointed that out on my Twitter right after the win. I looked up that stat. And I'm like, that's a cool stat. <laughs> I've had that kind of cool stat. 2002, uh, Johnny Benson. Wow. Ultimate Jeez. Dragon would be proud. <laughs> there was absolutely no reason to bring me up with that stat. You idiot. We're going to break. But we're gonna keep on trucking, 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 trucking. I asked all Pit 23 Dragon if she had heard of you, and she said that you missed the point when you said that Kevin Grubb and Jimmy Mayfield's situations weren't similar. Your thoughts? She's clearly sick in the head. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not surprised. Ultimate 23 Dragon hasn't been the most sane person around. This is the same person who thinks that Matt Kenseth of all people whines too much. You're joking, right? I just nudged him a little off for but hey. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Call it what you want, but it's, uh, I just feel like they've lost total control of this whole thing. That's not what racing's all about. This video is the main thing. Uh, uh, uh. I am not discussing that again. I am not discussing that again. What are the odds that Ultimate 23 Dragon stops watching NASCAR and immediately her guy wins? Well, considering the date you tweeted that, I would say pretty good. Why does everyone hate her? She has done nothing wrong and makes great videos. Finally, someone who speaks the truth. Being a pain in the behind to Jerry Lundberg, accusing him of plotting to assassinate Brian France. What the hell? Okay, uh, massive problem here. Oh, of course, Libertine Sticks. That makes sense. Okay, uh, let me tell you what I would have told one other person had a similar attempt at an insulting meme against me was still on YouTube. Next time you're gonna try and make an insulting meme against somebody, make sure you're actually using a television program that people actually watch. He's like someone is ATTENTION HUNGRY! Says the guy who spelled ATTENTION HUNGRY all caps in a vertical line. We need more females in the NASCAR social community, but not like this one. She is completely out of control, crazy, and is attacking someone who doesn't deserve it just because she's jealous of his first wife's and her popularity. And people like you is why we're never going to have these major female stars in the NASCAR universe anymore. Because regardless of what the profession of the person is, you guys always want to pick on them more than the male counterparts. Whether it's the YouTubian buddies like me, the reporters like Jenna Fryer, or the drivers like Danica Patrick. All you want to do is pick, 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 just because we're female. That's why we don't have a major female fan base in the NASCAR community. Because of trolls like you! Someone decided to do a Photoshop, and I thought it was pretty hilarious. Uh, they did a top 10 anime battle thing, and they put me and him <laughs> as the thumbnail. <laughs> uh. <laughs> And the only way I would ever see that legit being a thing is if characters based on us fought on Dragon Ball Z or any of their incarnates and stuff. <laughs> uh, I just
just found this one funny, to be honest. <laughs> hmm. Okay, moving on. There's some sort of fucking rodent hanging on the door! Quiet as a mouse. Quiet as a mouse. Rodent? You mean that thing? Hold up. <laughs> A rodent, huh? <laughs> so, uh, meet the so-called rodent. <laughs> this is a Litwick doll. <laughs> it's not a rodent. It's a Pokemon doll. <laughs> I'm not even going to start with this one. What's the one NASCAR video that never fails to astonish you? Anything uploaded by Ultimate 23 Dragon. Oh, yeah. You see what you made me do? Get back here. The reasons are just odd. She wants me to video trying to prove that my joy has some sort of thing for Ryan Newman. Because he does? There's another one that I don't understand. Post comes up. Until late 2015, there was a NASCAR fanfiction website. Cringe to oblivion. The top comment on that fucking post was... I feel like it was made by Ultimate Dragon 23. When I first clicked on this girl's videos, like, years ago, with the intro of wrestling and an obsession with Johnny Benson, I thought it was a 12-year-old squeaker who didn't hit puberty yet. An odd obsession with Johnny Benson? Dude, have you ever considered that Johnny Benson is my favorite driver? Why do you think he's in all my intros? Why do you think I'm wearing a Johnny Benson t-shirt right now? Ugh. Odd obsession. That would be like you claiming that Balto Racing had an obsession with Jeff Gordon just because he was in a lot of the intros that he had in his early videos. Newsflash, it's because he's a fan of his. It's no different here. Johnny's in the intro because I'm a fan of his. Wow, you guys are ditz-headed. I'm not going to lie, when I first heard of Ultimate 23 Dragon, I really honestly thought he was a 13-year-old boy who didn't hit puberty yet. Oh. Why do I get these people? Why the blue hell do I get these people? NASCAR doesn't do any kind of random testing. They do what they call uh, re reasonable suspicion testing. And that what that means is if they believe something's going on, they need to do a test to do two things. Number one, either to clear that person's name or to get that person some help, to get that person some help. Get that person some help. So that's what NASCAR is all about, is to keep the sport as safe and as clean as possible. All right, reasonable suspicion, no random testing. All right, thanks. Do you know how stupid Jeff Hammond sounded right now in that video? Ugh. I've said this in the comments sector for videos pertaining to this subject, and I feel like in terms of you, it's what I desire most now knowing what I have, and have attempted to figure out doing all these random searches for a long while whenever you get into my head for whatever reason. Regardless of which path of theories throughout these years regarding you makes up the truth in terms of your story. Kevin? I hope that you are at peace. And, uh, so I guess this is um, a good send into to the next question. Um, what is your guys' favorite DW moment of all time? I guess my favorite racing moment, even though I never saw this live, was like, you know, the icky shuckle. Uh, or, uh, no, not shuckle. Shuffle, my bad. <laughs> I always, I always freaking mess up words on this podcast, man. What else is new? The, uh, the, the icky shuffle after he won the 1989 Daytona 500 uh, in terms of racing. That was my favorite racing moment from him. When he made that comment in 2018 that 70% of the garage area takes Adderall and then tried to backtrack it claiming it was a joke, I've heard that excuse before, nobody was sympathetic towards him, especially Bubba Wallace. 
He might need to take some Adderall for that one. But uh... One of Joey's wins came via a bump and run against Martin Trucks Jr. at Martinsville, which is the only reason Joey got into the Final Four. That was also the race that now features the now infamous... I may win the battle, but he ain't winning the damn war. You know where this is going. Not only did Joey Logano win the damn war, he did it cleanly, which anti-Logano people did not expect, and Trux didn't try any form of retaliation after his Martinsville rant. Sure, a lot of people wanted Truex to win because of the fact 2018 was Furniture Row Racing's last year, but when it was announced that Truex would be headed to Joe Gibbs Racing, a lot of people showed concern for Truex's future and the racer he would become, fearing he would succumb to being a whiny pest like all of Joe Gibbs Racing's chosen ones throughout the 2010s. And now they weren't sure if Truex was going to be the same guy as he has been. That well, there were also a few rooting for Logano. Because Bush and Harvick were already massively hated. And while some see Logano in the same fashion, they were starting to see Truex that way too. With Truex going to Gibbs in the future, most saw Logano as the lesser of four evils, so to speak. Muppet was one thing. Reddit was the extreme. But when Logano won, which once and for all flat out embarrassed NASCAR's playoff format... The extreme anti-Logano fans... Well... It's over! Fucking NASCAR is over! Pack it up! Put it on a hauler! And send it in a fucking junkyard! This is a fucking travesty! Why?! Fucking why?! The entire finale was iconic because it proves everything the old school-ass race fans like myself have been saying all along! The chase was stupid since day one. The playoffs were stupid since day one. Auto racing is not a stick and ball sport. We don't need playoffs. Also, if 2018 didn't convince you we didn't need this format, then Matt Crafton won the 2019 Truck Series Championship while not winning a race the entire season. Most certainly should have. This is what the clods of NASCAR wanted. A playoff format where winning mattered. And they got their most dramatic one ever. And probably ever will be in this format. Much to the detriment of one of their main guys. It's not like we couldn't have a season-long format where it comes down to who can beat the other. Oh, wait. Todd Bodine winning the race, and Johnny Benson will win the championship. Buddy, you are the man. You are the man. But still, this is what NASCAR wanted, and it backfired on him. Hey, you want to hear a scary thought about the truck series in 2020? Listen up. If Ross Chastain wins the 44 and wins, it's likely that Natalie Decker will be driving a truck with a win sticker on it. Ah, Natalie Decker racing a truck with a sticker on it! Shut up! <sighs> Just an attempt for- Jake, you know better than that! Okay, Jake, you of all people should know that this is not an attempt for clout. What is clout supposed to be anyway? I keep hearing that term a lot. Uh-huh. So, what is political or business-like about this? There's no clout here. Why would I want to do this for clout? Why would I want to do this for attention? Rarest of rare. I'll give whoever made this picture credit. This is one heck of a Photoshop. But there are some things in the picture that give it away. So, I'll give whoever made this picture credit for the Photoshop. But, um... There are some things that my eagle eye can detect, so. Oh, and the username is AwesomeBill94. Cool. Someone who's after my own heart, apparently. Ultimate 23 Dragons in the process of trying to get one over seeing Johnny Benson or go on another Mike Choi when I'm considering Ryan Newman. Well, make up your mind. <laughs> Which one am I supposedly doing? I only really watch NASCAR compilations and things like BFM's NASCAR Bus Series, which really isn't an original series, and Erica Steph's Stop Motions and Short Films. Nothing to make bad content except for Kamikaze and Ultimate Dragon 21. <laughs> Ultimate Dragon 21! <laughs> so I started a YouTube
YouTube channel in 2016, instead of Johnny Benson, my drive driver representative is Johnny Sauter. Is this correct? <laughs> Yeah, you don't watch NASCAR YouTube, do you? You just pick up a bunch of garbage, aren't you? Except for Kamikaze and Ultimate Dragon 21, they are both fucking awful. So, yeah, you don't watch NASCAR YouTube. You, Mike, Mikey G4680, you are a phony baloney. <laughs> Ultimate 23 Dragon, I have never watched but heard from many that she is terrible. And you chose to believe that. The, like... Take a few minutes to watch my things before making that assumption, idiot. She makes Kamikaze look like Erica's death. Hey, wait, I have Photoshop. I can do that. Wait, we're in a fluid with her, too? No, you're not in a fluid with me. Black Lives Matter, you should make a bad seasons of Johnny Benson in 2003 or 99 because for you two three dragon. This video needs to be made, thank you. That was about the media video. And then one of the usual suspects I see in the video says, Can you believe yesterday? She thought she was being so smart, but really she made herself look so bad. Y'all have to react to it, or at least talk about it on the podcast. Throughout the off-season, um, expect um, other videos from the 2018 season as well. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I, Oh, yeah, that's right, I forgot. Um... I'm moving to the NBA, guys. I'm sorry. I can't do it. So, that's right. I'm officially Someone, I'm officially retiring now. Um, someone's got to cover so yeah. that dying sport. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm moving to the I'm moving to the NBA, guys. I'm sorry. I, so I I totally forgot. Um. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Legs Matter. I'll never see you again. Stop crying, Jeff Gordon. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Wait, that's not an no, NBA that, team logo. That was a. That was no, a you fought. No, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm not different. going. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> now we're now he's gonna be replaced by White Flags Matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His roommate White Flags Matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. I'm not going anywhere. And then everyone started going, "Ha ha, send it to Dragon and all that garbage and stuff." But here's what they did not know. I watched that particular podcast the entire way through without seeing a thing. And when Darian made that dumb NBA comment, got him. This has been a very wonderful podcast. We only got a few more to go for the season. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you back next year on Danny B Talks whenever we start back up. And uh, hope you all had fun. It's been a good show. And uh, but. What, what? What are y'all laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. I'll tell you after. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, this has been uh, Danny B. Talks. By the way, PewDiePie, I can do this too. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, yeah, that was an interesting moment. So, they didn't discuss it per se, but I did make myself known that I was watching. And then everyone was saying, Hey, don't stop the podcast! Back in there! <laughs> that was so dumb. Let's move on. This must be done instantly. Okay, Gator, you of all people should know about this. This is, that is Jake's comment from earlier in the video. Just when you thought the Avengers fighting Thanos was intense, here comes Ultimate 23 Dragon. I wonder how that would work. And now, I'm going to save the world in my own way. Because I am inevitable. For me, you destroy us and all that stuff, please watch this video. Mikey, 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 Mikey. Mikey, 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 Mikey. I can't take this! Too much Mikey! Hey, Gauntlet. Can you get rid of all these illnesses and give us world peace and provide endless food for everybody and make everybody healthy and all that stuff? Can you do that for me, please? Is honestly 
anything wrong with Ultimate 23 Dragon. I swear she got the most attention in years with that beef with Darian last year, and now she's trying to restart it. Uh, should I tell him? <music> Looks like no one asked for weekly podcast for Erica Steph. Oh, what happened? Really? Uh, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a public service announcement. The Real Deal series is a curse, just like the Fascinol curse created by the same content creator. Natalie Decker, in fact, is cursed by this video series and has also low priority on the DGR Truck Series team as of this message. Yet now she is being trolled to death and is being torn down by crowds of people led by the very person that hyped her up the most. Chandler Smith, Ryan Vargas, and especially Haley Deegan, you've been warned. Super Claude responds with, In that case, Ultimate 22 Dragon, who's ready for a part 2 video? Darian Gilliam, NASCAR's YouTube voodoo witch doctor. Oh, urinating tree! We have a video idea for you! I even took the time to make a thumbnail for you! Alright, the Cup Series. What do I have planned for these guys? Uh, like that of the other series, we have the back-to-back -back Tennessee specials at both Bristol and the Nashville Super Speedway. Because all of the major NASCAR stuff is going to be occurring in Nashville now, you better have some Nashville representation with the Cup Series, so Nashville Super Speedway is your best bet on that one, so. I wish this place didn't shut down. Well, guess what? We'll be right back with Michael Waltrop. 2002 was not a good year for the NASCAR Bush Series overall in terms of attrition. Ricky Hendrick was injured at Las Vegas and before the end of the year decided to retire from racing as a result at the age of 22. The biggest wreck in Bush Series history and in the modern era of NASCAR occurred at Talladega. And technically it did have an injury. But it was literally just Mike Harmon biting his tongue and he had to get stitches for it. I'm not making that up. Cup Series regular Johnny Benson suffered rib injuries at the Spring Richmond race, a race I went to. Thanks, Brian Vickers. In the end, Christian Elder is a driver that most people only know for one reason. And like most drivers only known for one reason, that reason was a huge or violent crash. But unlike most drivers known for only one big reason and one big crash, Christian's crash tragically caused a lot of severe pain that he had to endure until the very end. Though he and his racing career isn't as well known or remembered by us fans compared to other drivers he competed with back during the era he competed in, Christian is finally remembered by those who knew him best. Though the after effects of that Chicagoland crash in 2002 led to a tragic end to Christian's life, at least he is no longer suffering from the intense physical pain he had to endure for so long. And the charity bike event named in his honor ensures that his memory and legacy will live on. Alex has done way more than just that. He's hosted multiple, multiple game shows throughout his career. He's done acting. He was a guest interview at WrestleMania 7 along with Regis. He was a race car driver. Oh, what? You don't remember the time that Alex Trebek was a race car driver? Well. Not everyone can provide the speed like in a horse race. Some of them are there to fill out the field, and that's what I'm for. Meanwhile, in the I don't know who I'm talking to department. I'm asking you to leave me alone. I'm just an innocent <laughs> actor over here. You NASCAR guys are out of your minds. You NASCAR guys are out of your minds? Dude, you're talking to Johnny Benson, not Kyle Busch. The crowd loving every minute of this one as we're seeing changes of position, changes for lead, and a lot of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing here. Johnny Benson nearly goes three wide on Danny Way and Fonsworth Bentley going into turn one, but backed off knowing it wouldn't work. And he was right. Back up 
Fosworth Bill oh. gets it down. Big contact. You know, I saw that coming. He was offline coming into turn one. He was too narrow on the left-hand side. Not enough room to hit the apex, and you see the result. Eric Close, for some reason, was happy that Danny Way had crashed out. And another half season of NASCAR on Fox Atrocity is finally done. So now we can move on to better superior coverage on NASCAR and NBC. Which means for the next five months we're going to be hearing nothing but, Oh my god, Rick Allen sucks! He is so horrible in the booth! Why do you guys still have Rick Allen iron? Where's my joy? We want our britches! My joy! Oh hell, my joy! Oh my god, shut up! So with the Power Stroke diesel, how much can I pull? I'll show you. Yes! The power strokes turbocharged, so it'll probably pull around three G's in the turns. Not what I was talking about. Ford Super Duty, with the most pulling power in its class, any way you look at it. I meant, how much can it haul? Oh, well in that case, it really hauls off turn two. Watch this. People ask me to endorse the strangest things. A green recliner? Not much of a sitter. I like going fast. 68 Shelby. You know, it was only about 300 and some odd made. This car rips. Pure oil now. Keeping them up's half the fun. They all get pure later filters. Pure oil later. I snag them from the track. Legends live. A pure later, pure later. For someone who's used to running on high octane, Johnny Benson starts every day with a high energy breakfast, like this whole grain oat pack Cheerios breakfast. And where can you get such a high energy breakfast? Meyer, where you'll find low prices on a large selection of fruit, juices, breads, milk, and the one and only Cheerios. We start with a high octane breakfast every day. So fuel up with Cheerios at Meyer and find low prices on top of low prices every day. Maybe we should have taken Mommy's car, you know, the one with the trunk. Hold on, let me have a moment with you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in to watch this 10-year anniversary spectacular video that I have put together involving some memorable, as well as my favorite moments, across me being on YouTube for 10 years. My original plan for this video was to have a bunch of those moments in chronological order based on upload dates, and what I remember based on other videos. However, those plans changed when the Eric McClure tragedy happened. The reason for that is because my original plan for that video was for it to go up on May 5th, 2021. But then Eric passed away three days before that, so out of respect to him and his family, friends, and fans, I postponed and updated that video, which went out in August of 2021, meaning that would be the last video before this one. And I refused to have this video end on a sad note. So, I changed up the rules a bit, and instead, this explanation, and what I'm actually going to show last, will be the conclusion. So, instead of that, what I'm going to do is show off probably the biggest moment 
that I have achieved via YouTube, which also occurred in 2021. It's going to be highlights of probably my biggest accomplishments in terms of YouTube when I first interviewed and then two months later met in person my all-time favorite driver, Johnny Benson. I really hope you guys enjoy those clips and take the time to watch the actual videos in question because interviewing and then meeting him, nothing's going to top that. Nothing's going to top that. And I appreciate the YouTube and buddies who have been along with through the ride, both the good and the bad, and anywhere in between. But I hope that this video brought back a lot of mostly good memories across my time on YouTube. So, here's the finale involving my all-time favorite driver, Johnny Benson. And it's still the biggest thrill of my life, having these two events happen. Thank you for 10 years on YouTube, and thank you for being a YouTubian, buddy. There was a segment on the show called Speed Fan Q&A. And for years, I always had the same question. Why wasn't that segment just called Ask Johnny? Because you answered 99% of the questions. <laughs> That's because Kenny and Mikey didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I remember specifically one episode where a question was asked, and Schrader, word for word, said, that question's so easy that I'm going to let Johnny answer it. <laughs> <laughs> there was this one where they were talking about motor oil, and they said, let's have the driver of the Valvoline car answer that question. <laughs> Somehow that doesn't surprise me either. <laughs> uh, what's the angriest you've ever been at another driver during a race? Oh, I can tell you that one. First of all, <laughs> they, uh, one of my fellow competitors as racing with, we'll, we'll keep the names out of it, but he was leaving it and was spun out by well, Kevin Hart, Rick, we, we can say him. Yeah, yes, say I was right. And I'm running out of third. And so I'll keep it names up, but I know what you're talking about. He's driving around. He comes back. He wrecks me. And I'm like, I don't even know what was going on, you know? He, well, I mean, I know what was going on. Yeah, but he, I, I saw uh, Harvard spit him out. And anyway, so he wrecks me. And of course, I'm pretty upset about it because there was only one lap to go, two laps to go, we run second. And he just, he picked the wrong car. <laughs> we were both yellow and black. And he just, he picked the wrong car. He was, I don't know what he was saying at all. <laughs> I, so I, that was the thing. Wait, what, I track, what track did you say this was? This was Bristol. Bristol. It's the story oh, that we Bristol. discussed, Alex. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I remember post-race, you go towards this driver, here comes this idiot crew chief and tries to slap you in the back because, for whatever reason, he thought you were going to punch him. Now, if this was Johnny oh, yeah, Sauter, I could see that, but not Johnny Benson. You're not that type. <laughs> I don't remember anybody coming up behind me, but... Uh, uh, I've seen the footage. Yeah. We, we had, uh, yeah, we had a little discussion, and then, of course, then I got in trouble. That's when I got in trouble. So I'm down in a NASCAR trailer getting yelled at, and I'm like, why am I the one getting in trouble? He's the guy that wrecked me. And after they watched the video, then uh, they said, you can go now, and they went and got the other guy. Supposedly they he did that because after the race, you went up to his car and nudged him. And Larry McReynolds called that payback. Like, how? That's not payback. Payback. <laughs> Here's the flaw with NASCAR Thunder 2004. The rivalry system, it basically programs every single driver to be Robbie Gordon, because that's how he would race. There you go. I've never played the game, so I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> but I have to go yeah. back to that Bristol race in 07, because I remember this one clearly. You, Your team, I don't know how this happened. It was a 200-lap race. Everyone except you put on lap 40. 
You pit on lap 105, and then you come storming through the field and got the lead when Kyle Busch took himself and Travis Quapple out. You end up winning the race. Brendan Gaughan finishes second. And the friend of my group, who's a Gaughan fan, says, and I quote, great, they made Bristol so easy, even Johnny Benson can win there now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really hope that that person did not take any of Johnny's true talent away. I have seen hey, what this guy can no. in a race car. I got she was doing that to mock me. It's car. fine. <laughs> I remember watching the banquet from 2008 when you were given the championship ring. It looked like it was Hornaday's size instead of yours. Did NASCAR ever correct that? No. <laughs> they already got your name on it. I, I, don't, I don't remember that. That, that, that ring fits. It's a little loose, but it's not, like, way off. Okay. Because um, I saw your reaction when you put it on, and it felt kind of loose to you. Yeah, I might have been busted on Hornaday. <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking. I saw you laughing when I brought up Pokemon. Do you have any knowledge of Pokemon? I haven't a clue. I know there's this <laughs> little, little yellow... Squish ball thing or something. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> and I doubt your kids were into Pokemon too. I do. I do not I, get the Pokemon vibe from Caitlin. And for anyone wondering, my favorite pro wrestler is the Undertaker, which everybody knows. So <laughs> the uh, other. That's showing you how, how bad it is for me. I know Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think everyone knows Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And fun fact, The Undertaker's first championship in what's now the WWE came against Hulk Hogan. So there's the connection there. <laughs> there you go. So I don't want to bring this up because it was a dark night for both of us. I was only it's six funny, years old. It's funny how you start off with a question. I don't want to bring it up, but then you do. <laughs> well, because I have a question about it. but uh, I know where this is going. Even, yeah, I remember this night, but Mary, it's not going where you think it's going. So yep. our intro to the podcast includes <laughs> you at Homestead doing a burnout with the with the pace car. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? And, fr and but my question was, how mad was NASCAR? <laughs> well, yeah, I was doing a burnout in a truck. I wasn't in the yeah. pace car. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they don't care. I told them I was gonna I was gonna run into the side of his door and do a burnout if we won it. Okay. And so they're back there. The other reason why the pace car was here was they were both be back there to get victory lane stuff mm -hmm. done. Okay. Them. And so we were just chatting. You know, I had the car shut off at one point in time. We were just chatting through the windows. And I told them that I was going to do that. I told them previously. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> and so when I turned around to do it, he kept moving. I wish there was a whole video on it. So I'm chasing him around back there, and he kept moving, so I went nose to nose to him, and then he held his foot on a brake. I, I told him to stand on the gas, but he wouldn't. He, he, he basically said afterwards, he goes, I really couldn't uh, participate in that <laughs> in as far, you know. So he just held the brake, and I went through two gears and and stuff like that. Now, it did nothing to my truck, but it, but uh, uh, word has it through the the thing that it did like twenty five hundred dollars worth of damage. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'd have to rewatch the clip to see if there was any damage because I don't think there was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. You couldn't really see it. It was just it cracked and flexed it. Yeah, and did some stuff though. Uh, All right, so well, I got to get going here. So. I understood. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this with us. I really appreciate oh, it. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. All right. All right. Oh my god, I cannot believe we just did that. <laughs> I am so happy. Tim!
much history on this ground, people. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> this is the car he's racing tonight. You know, do you know that I actually just spent high school? Scared right at us. Oh, wonderful. I told Caitlin about it. Yeah, we're not gonna bombard. We're, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that to him. <laughs> he said it right for us. Hey, Johnny. This is Alex. <laughs> You're over Mary. Hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> not too. <laughs> hey, can we get a picture together? The three of us? All right, you go first. Now you're filming me meeting him. All right. This is Mary about to meet her hero. I can't see shit. There he is. See him? There's my autograph. There's Frank getting his stuff signed. I think I've seen his dad race more than, than him. Hi, Caitlin! Hi! Uh, <laughs> What's that? Bring back, bring back memories? <laughs> the rest of that is in Ernie's Pond. <laughs> hey, Johnny, can you say something for the vlog? <laughs> you can just say hello. <laughs> I say hi too. Yeah. Yes, it is recording. Excellent. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Caitlin, I told you look for the Lycos merch. <laughs> hey, good luck tonight, Johnny. Oh. I'm not going to interfere in anyone else's thing. What'd you think of Carson's run last night? I haven't seen it. Second. Oh, well, now I know. Well, I did tape it. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Hey, Joe, what are you doing? Hello. All right, I want to get this on the vlog here. <laughs> All right, I'll hold that for you. <laughs> Tell me when it turns on. <laughs> I didn't know I'd be this much taller than you. <laughs> All right, we're standing by the car itself with Mary. Hi. And look who else decided to make an appearance. <laughs> hi. Hi, Griffin. Say hi. Hello. He doesn't want to say much. No. No, he's anyway, kind of shy. Um, it's okay. How are things going? Good. Does the, uh, just. I don't know what I should say because I'm tired and I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> I, I, the only reason I, I was on episode 24 with that much energy was because I I actually had a whole thing about Pepper. Anyway, we're going to be discussing some work stuff, so peace out. <laughs> yeah, this, car, this is the same car Kenny Wallace raced a couple yes. weeks ago. Hey, Johnny, no pressure, but this is the same car Kenny Wallace finished second with. <laughs> So, you drove the 36 car. True. <laughs> You're the man, Johnny. <laughs> you finally, you've lived a dream. Yes, I did. Two dreams in one day. Wait, two dreams within how long is it? Two months. Two months. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Wait, she could. Wait, pull it off. No, that won't work. <laughs> Hold up. All right. Maybe you could just. We might, we might go get food. All right. Okay. okay. You could just like strap, like do how you get in the car. <laughs> She's hiding from you. Let's go get food, man. She's hiding from you, Johnny. Get along, guy. How far, is, how, how far are you from here? Hour and a half. <laughs> they stuck up on us! <laughs> was it definitely a lot of fun to, to race. Hate that's that last caution, but um, yeah. it is what it is. You have a good time. Fun watching you come from the back to the front. That'd be fun for you. What's it feel like getting back in the seat? Does it give you a little bit of the edge? <laughs> 
I don't know about that, but it was. Say it's fun, and I, I know my way around here at least. Mm -hmm. I kind of adapt to the different style engines, stuff like that. That was uh, a challenge at the beginning, but I felt like I got pretty good at it once we were. We got some good laps yesterday. We practiced, and mm -hmm. you backed it up with the way that you raced down here. Um, you sure look good. Nobody would question that. You're running against some good competition out here, as you know, because at one time you were that competition here. <laughs> yeah, probably getting a little too old to go this fast, probably, right? <laughs> at least with the other cars. But uh, no, I mean, it's uh, cool. I have to introduce you to John Force then. Appreciate everybody here at Berlin Race Day for doing that. And for all the fans coming here and enjoying the weekend, it, that's pretty awesome. Well, Thank you, know, you. I follow you on Facebook. <laughs> You know, I know that you're gone for four days. Johnny now has goats down on the farm. Now, who takes care of the farm? Really? Here? That's going to be a problem. Yeah, now the goats take care of it. That's why I got them. <laughs> you notice oh. the kudzu and all the weeds and woods and all that's got pretty bad down here in North Carolina with the kudzu, so. <laughs> he has a ton of fun. You can see by it if you follow him, but uh, a lot of fun. And we want to thank you for coming up here. And uh, doing it, Nick DeLombre gave you a heck of a ride. Tim was there, yep. Vinny helping you out, and uh, I know that you had a lot of fun. Oh, I did, and I'd like to say a really big thanks to the guys that work on the car and kind of dinged it up a little bit, but they, <laughs> I don't know if they're mad or not. I don't think so. They were having a good time, but they said that was a little rough around from what Kenny was. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're never, you're never classified as a rough driver, either. So no. coming back up here to see something like that, you know what? You still got it. Yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, it was a lot of fun, and it just, uh, I mean, I got two guys, but I think they ran into a little bit of a problem, and then, they did. with trying to keep the momentum up, all of a sudden, you're, you're, you're get trapped pretty fast, so, it, uh, but like I say, had a great time. There he is. Fans, all the way up from North Carolina, I'm putting your hands together. Johnny Benson Jr. down here. Hey! <laughs> That's nice. Great guy, great family. We had so much fun with Johnny. It's just crazy. <laughs> so. All right, so this week came up. Look closely. <laughs> that's, that's us. <laughs> oh, shit. I can't believe that. Hey, I'm going to be famous on Twitter. Send me that picture, please. I will. <laughs> <laughs>
I had a lot of great laughs too, as you can tell. Among all the funny moments, the funniest, far and away, was when Alex wanted me to take a picture of him next to Johnny's car. I intentionally had Johnny in the shot, but then when I focused on having Alex fully in the picture, when I took the picture, Johnny photobombed him! <laughs> and because of the angle of the sun on my phone when I took the picture, I didn't notice until Alex and I both saw the picture! <laughs> Thanks, Johnny! For the record, he nearly got me too, but Alex was quick with my camera. <laughs> This was one of the best days I've had in such a long time, and probably ever. Everything I wanted to do at Berlin Raceway that day, I did, and then some. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog, because I sure as heck enjoyed that entire day. May 29th, 2021 is a day I will never forget. Thank you everyone for watching. This is Ultimate 23 Dragon, and that's my final answer. Hey Johnny, can you say something for the vlog? <laughs> you can just say hello. <laughs> I say hi too. Yeah. Yes, it is recording. Excellent. Thank the Lord.